Oh. Have you... Let's get in the middle here. Have you ever just walked into a shitstorm and no matter where you choose to go, that shitstorm followed you? You see, initially, it started on Twitter. Then it followed me to IGN. Then it followed me to Reddit. Then it followed me to TikTok. Then it followed me back to YouTube. And I was like, you know what? I have some time. Why don't I just talk about this on my own fucking channel? And it's the theory going around on the internet that started two days ago. I was there when it initially started about Gwen Stacy being trans. Oh boy, there's stupidity on both sides of this. There are the 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 typical one brain cell bigots that that don't that won't just let stupid people say stupid shit and let them go. That they always have to come at it from a, a, a direction of just 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 hate and malice. And then there are the people championing this that don't seem to understand the character of Gwen Stacy. Because one of the, the, the constant comments that I keep seeing on all these different websites is, well, I don't read the comics and I don't know a lot about the character. I only went to go see this movie, which means they didn't go and see Into the Spider-Verse. They only saw this movie. And from what I saw in this movie, because of this, this, that, and this, um, I believe that the character is trans. Okay, so let's take it off the top. First off, the color scheme. Now, what a lot of people were complaining about in regards to the colors that they saw, hey, guess what? Guess who has, guess who has Spider-Gwen comics? This guy. The colors that people are talking about have always been her colors. Even if you flip it to the back, that 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 art style that's the art style of her home universe it's even they literally took the art style from the comic from the cover of the comic and used it for her own universe because each and every one of the universes has their own theme and their themes are typically lifted from whatever the media is that they come from which is why you see lego characters 3d characters 2D animation characters, all these different characters essentially walking around and interacting with each other because their art style and their universe's art style is based upon their original media. Now, the the discussion about the trans flag in her her room, which is like in her room there's a um, um, a trans ally flag, and then her dad's also wearing a trans like ally pin. That's fine. Like, I've been to Pride events. I've walked around with, like, a, 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 a gay pride ally flag. Does it instantaneously make me gay? No. But it makes me understand that there are people out there who just want to live their fucking lives, and they aren't allowed to live their fucking lives because there are people out there that are more obsessed about what's going on with somebody else than they are with what's going on with them. <laughs> like... Continuing on just the, the 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 reasons behind why people believe that Gwen is trans. Her coming out to her dad. I saw a lot of people saying that, oh, she was really, really scared to essentially come out to her dad. First off, Gwen revealing herself to her dad is the culmination of her dealing with the trauma that she had from the beginning of the movie where at the beginning of the movie, her father realizes that she is Spider-Woman. She's basically been the person that he's been hunting the entire time. And she's also the person that most likely killed her best friend, Peter Parker. Her father is working on the least amount of information. And in that moment, he reacts like a cop and attempts to arrest Gwen. It's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, that is one of the best openings to a, a, a superhero animated movie ever which is her father makes that decision to essentially arrest her and he starts reading her her Miranda rights and you see the color drain from the world. That is trauma. Anytime Gwen is dealing with trauma, the color in her universe gets drained away. It's a beautiful way to show that somebody's dealing with anxiety and having a panic attack. When she goes back, she's basically reopening herself to the trauma from the beginning. She's dealing with the fact that, yes, she killed, he didn't, she didn't really kill Peter, he accidentally killed himself. 
but her father believes that she's a killer. He was trying to arrest her the last time that he saw her. She's coming out and making herself vulnerable for the first time in a long time because she's been gone for months. I don't really understand why someone would stop and look at that and then completely ignore that literally 20 to 30 minutes later, we have another coming out situation where Miles makes it back to his home universe and he has to reveal his identity to his mom and he's dealing with the same anxiety. All the spider people go through the exact same thing. Anytime they have to reveal their secret identity to someone, it's anxiety inducing. Here's the thing though. Yes, you can look at that and see yourself in that because that is what superheroes are designed for. Superheroes are designed to basically take these things that you're dealing with and, and, and bring them to life in a media for you to be able to digest and work through them. Having a Spider-Man basically reveal themselves to their loved ones and showing their loved ones who they actually are can be looked at as the equivalent of somebody who is trans or somebody who is gay essentially coming out to a parent or to a loved one and letting them know, hey, this is me, I'm gay, or hey, this is me, my name's Peter Parker, and I'm Spider-Man. That's great. However, completely blowing it out of proportion and, and just basically creating this entire situation around a character that was introduced five years ago, 2018, roughly five, four years ago, somewhere around there, who was introduced a couple years ago, but then was introduced even way before that, who was established as essentially a straight character. It's stupid to me. Like it's, it's why, why are we here? Why are we doing this? Like you could have, you could have, instead of going down the route we chose to go down, we could have went down the more interesting route and been like, see, that right there is a perfect representation of what the LGBTQ community has to deal with when they reveal who they are, their truth, to someone that they really love. And I'd have been like, you're absolutely right. That is a fantastic allegory. But to completely rewrite a character's sexuality because of like four arbitrary things when you could have really taken the one major thing and turn that into like a defining moment. That's fucking weird. <laughs> like that's, that's, <laughs> that, that's, 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 that, that's just weird. That's, that's, that's next level goofy to me. I'll never, I'll never legitimately understand that route. And then the, the, the argument that I see a lot of people have online, which is just condescending and douchebag from both sides of the aisle like the typical people who react to everything with hate and violence and death can go fuck themselves. But then watching like other people who are bringing this theory forward also act like douchebags and assholes the exact same way that they act not to be treated. They're choosing to treat other people that way. That's just a little bit hypocritical. It like literally took me out. Like it was consistently pissing me off every time I jumped from one platform to another. And then that platform would update because Everything shares metadata, which means if you see something on one website, the metadata gets tracked and it follows you no matter where you go was just exasperating. But let me know what you think about this entire situation. Comment down below and I will see you in the next one. Peace.